I have never used an Android device without a custom ROM until this week. But here I am to explain myself and my answers, and I hope that there are very important lessons for you all about threat modeling and how sometimes your worst enemy can actually be your friend. My very first smartphone I ever got was an iPhone 4, and then I got an iPhone 5S, and then from there I got the Nexus 6P, which I never used with stock Android. I immediately put a custom ROM on it, then eventually I got the Pixel 3a and the 3a XL, which I used for a lot of testing here on TechLore, and I daily drove that 3a with Calyx OS. So I recently got this Pixel 6 used, and this is my newest phone. I hope to keep it for the full five years of software updates, and I immediately flashed Calyx on it, as I normally do, but this last week, we're back on stock. I have three main reasons to share with you. And again, this is a me video. This isn't necessarily a recommendation to anybody. I still generally recommend custom ROMs to most people. First, I wanna start out by saying I am beginning to trust smaller projects a lot less as my journey continues, mainly from a security point of view, but privacy as well. So just a somewhat related example, many of the browsers that you see on F-Droid are days, weeks, or even sometimes months behind on security updates, which is a massive issue. Consider that some zero day exploits are abused in the wild within a day of being picked up. Meaning if you're a larger target and you're not up to date within a day, you could actually be victim of some pretty serious stuff. So being weeks behind for certain people's threat models is actually a big deal. Calyx fell behind a bit and even other custom ROMs fall behind a bit. This happens to everybody. You can't expect people, just a few people managing a project to be able to keep up and update things within the same exact time that a massive company that has dedicated people to this. So that's my first point. I have a hard time trusting individuals and even small groups to be running 24-7, 365 days to be able to give me those fast updates that I desire. Another additional technical point that I wanna outline is you're also trusting these people to implement things properly. So every feature that you see in browsers like Bromite have to be generally added after the fact, and you're trusting these developers to do that. And again, this entire video, I'm not bashing any of these developers because what they're doing is really impressive as is. These are just natural shortcomings of, well, kind of having second dibs on a lot of the software. You have to wait for Chromium to push an update, then you have to take that update and you have to apply it to your app and then you have to do anything else that your app requires and then you need to push that out and then maybe your app goes live hopefully quick enough. Even if we look at more advanced teams like Mega, which is like a full established company, they still work in very unprofessional ways as we recently saw. And so you really have to be able to trust the people and their implementation of what they're doing. To tie this back to ROMs, it's the same issue. All these ROM developers have to wait for the security updates to come out and then they have to implement them. And while they can be very, very close, generally speaking, you're gonna be better off on security updates if you're sticking with stock. I also trust a company like Google to better implement any security and privacy features better than other ROMs, even though those ROMs might actually give you a larger number of privacy and security features, which I surely will miss from Calyx. With that said, there is one big security feature that is on stock. Google Advanced Protection Program. Some context here. I've always threat modeled for where I am today. I feel like my threat modeling decisions I make up until now have always been made for the present issues that I deal with. Three years ago, I was looking at uh, my general threats and the things I was concerned about, and I would act accordingly, which is generally what we recommend. The problem is my lifestyle in our channel is very unpredictable in regards to how much we grow. And so now I want to be able to try to anticipate issues I'm gonna deal with in three plus years down the road. In three years, in three plus years, I do believe I'll be more concerned with targeted attacks from both general adversaries, uh, but also maybe even spyware from high threat models like governments. I don't know what we'll be working with. I don't know what clients will have in things like consulting, and we need to be ahead of the game. Google Advanced Protection Program is designed for journalists and people with high threat models who need a much higher degree of security. Google will constantly scan your entire account and any services that are hooked up to it for issues and alert you and lock them down if anything is suspected of being uh, tampered with. This is seriously important and there's a reason why journalists rely on it, politicians, and now I want to as well. These are the people that are some of the highest targets in the world, and there's a reason why they use this program. In fact, a lot of the privacy and security tools that you rely on likely internally use the Google Advanced Protection Program to protect themselves to make sure they're pushing safe software to you. I am in contact with them, but I don't know which I can publicly talk about, but I do know I can publicly say that Brave, well, they're part of it too. To tie this back to Android, this protection also carries over to Android as well. It prevents all app installations that aren't from the Play Store where everything can be verified as well through the Google Advanced Protection Program. And it also continually scans your Android device for anything that may trigger alarm. So now, I'm on stock with Google Advanced Protection Program Protection as I believe I could be a target in the next three to five years. It's a really sucky situation to be in because there's really no winning, um, but pretty much I'm having to pick my enemies here and this is unfortunately uh, the lesser of two evils that I think is what I'm gonna have to deal with in the next five years. 
Third, I've only ever used custom ROMs, and being on stock, I realized I was missing out on a lot of luxurious things that I'm like, wow, that's actually kind of nice to have that. My pseudo working natively is a godsend and means I can finally ditch Hushed, which I despise. It's a garbage application. I always attributed Hush to being bad to maybe being a custom ROM thing. Maybe it just didn't work well with custom ROMs, but no, it's actually just as bad on stock. It's just a bad application. So getting to use my sudo is truly incredible and actually takes my privacy game up a massive notch because it actually enables me to better use pseudonyms now on my phone and I can conveniently access them when I'm on the go. Aside from that, having Google Pay access means I can actually pay for some of the applications I always wanted to pay for easily and conveniently. Yes, you still have to go through Google. Yes, there's a privacy concern there, not denying any of that, but being able to pay for some of those apps I always wanted to pay for is very nice. So those are my three reasons. The second one is the main one, and it's the Google Advanced Protection Program and how I do genuinely fear for my threat model in the next three to five years. The real life pro tip here is to not create a YouTube channel with hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And you don't have to worry about things like this because you stay off most people's radar and you should be fine just sticking with getting security updates every two or three days or even maybe waiting a week, though I still don't recommend it. The biggest issue with being on stock is the privacy aspect of things. And I will say that I have found many ways to help a mitigate those privacy concerns. They're not fully gone because I still have to have some reliance on Google for the advanced protection program. But with that said, I've done a lot of things to help mitigate those issues to still consider my phone reasonably private with that top-notch security. I also wanna say that I don't want you to take what I've done as advice for yourself because one, everyone is a little bit different. But second, um, there's a big assumption here that what we're going to be doing is going to be still on good legal terms with our current jurisdiction. Um, if you're a whistleblower and you're someone like Edward Snowden and you're trying to avoid your own government from catching you, this is a terrible decision to make. It's obviously not the correct approach. This is just the best approach for my current situation and I think the situation I'll be in in the next three to five years where we're just trying to prevent ourselves from high level threats and things that we're likely to be targeted by that I do not want to deal with and the best way that we can deal with that is through things like the Advanced Protection Program and recently Apple just released Lockdown Mode, which is also perfect for a similar reason. Feel free to judge me. But I'll be happy knowing I'm probably gonna be safer than I was if I was to take another approach three to five years from now. I'll be following up in future content with how this whole journey goes. Definitely share your thoughts. And really the main thing I wanna take away here is remember threat modeling. Check out our threat modeling guide if you wanna know what I'm talking about. It's essentially coming up with a plan so you can tailor your privacy and security journey to yourself and not just some external thing that people tell you to do. Check out that video. It's very useful. It's where I recommend everyone starts their privacy journey. See you next time on TechLore.